Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets, and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, more great stories of mass adoption. First up, Morgan Stanley may bet on Bitcoin in a $150 billion investment arm. And this is just good because we're starting to see more older institutions getting into the cryptocurrency game. And on top of that, we've got BNY Mellon support for Bitcoin is a tipping point for crypto, say industry leaders. And we're gonna take a look at a bank over 200 plus years old, who's getting into cryptocurrency angel assets and finally embracing it. And then lastly, we'll take a look at two pieces. The elites have set the stage for the greatest economic crisis in history, which I don't believe is actually true. And the very last piece, we'll take a look at three reasons why Theta hit a new all-time high at $3.49. So take a look at all those things, but first take a look at what's on the market. So today we've got to February 15th, 10.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, nice brisk day here in El Paso, Texas. Cold and disgusting. I hate this weather. But uh, hey, here we are. Anyhow, let's see what we got today. Let me blow this up so everybody can take a look at it. So we've got Bitcoin, which took a little bit of a dump last night, which is not surprising. If you're new to the cryptocurrency game, first of all, welcome. Uh, you're here at the right time. Unfortunately, you're going to see these things called dips, peaks, and valleys. And that's what happened last night. Everybody thought that Bitcoin's going to go to 50,000 and then that was going to go to the moon. <laughs> It doesn't work like that. Uh, whatever you think it's going to happen usually does the opposite. At least that's how that's my experiences. But we had Bitcoin now a little recovery at 48.6. I think it was below 48 at one point. So yeah, it is what it is. And that's just how it goes. Ethereum 18.17 has tether. Nobody cares unless you're an auditor. Cardano uh, a little bit up uh, 0.87 and uh, doing pretty good things. Polkadot still holding strong at geez 28 dollars. It's pretty good, but it's up uh, five percent. And we just got some people that are up and down, so on and forth. But the big winner, I think, is Theta and also Bitcoin Cash. I was talking to my friend George yesterday, and he actually sold a couple of Ethereum for Bitcoin Cash. I go, why did you do that? He goes, I think it's going to go up. And sure enough, it went up. I was like, did you do TA or fundamental analysis? Like, nope, just think it's going to go up. I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. See, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And that is exactly what is going on. So also, let's take a look at what the projected range is for the next hour. Uh, look at Komodo, look at uh, Ontology. Looks like Komodo next hour could go up 16%. Ontology up 12%. Voyager token. Hey, I like that. It's one of my big picks. Uh, looks like it go up 9%. Monacoin, Wanchain. Hey, Wanchain, I remember that one. It's supposed to be like the next great thing. And then now here we are. So look for those to go up. Anyhow, that's what we got in the market. Let's jump into today's uh, big top story, shall we? So, first of all, this is interesting to me. And again, it doesn't really matter about what people say or, or what's going on, but it really is to the whole group or herd mentality. So when you have these big older institutions getting in, then it's kind of signals to everybody else to go, hey, it's okay, it's safe, you can come in, you're not gonna get scammed and fleeced for all your money. So when I see something like Morgan Stanley come in and then Mellon, which, uh, you know, sure, the Paul Tudor Jones and the uh, Mass Mutuals, I'm like, great, because this is a signal to people that uh, it's okay, and that means that more people will come in and buy into our market. I like to see that. So what's going on here? Well, Morgan Stanley may bet, may bet $150 billion. So what's going on? So CounterPoint Global, a unit of Morgan Stanley, investment management that's wrecked up wins and mutual fund rankings with exploring whether the crypto would be a suitable option for its investors. I'll get in that sec. Morgan Stanley's affirmation would put the heft of an almost century-old marquee Wall Street name behind a volatile asset class that's still struggling to win acceptance in much of the traditional financial industry. And this is all true. Uh, you know, it, it, to win acceptance in the financial industry, uh, you know, the, the legacy programs, yeah, that is very true. But um, if you take a look at it over the last 10 years, it's the, it's the best performing asset class of the last decade. So when we have these people come in, it really is an affirmation, but in all honesty, I think some of them were, were, were here before, but I think they couldn't really signal those things either because of filings of the SEC or different legalizations or whatever else. But I think once they come in and they, and they do it publicly, then of course it is a very big thing. I don't think that these industries were like, oh, we should really stay away from it. Even JP Morgan was a bunch of liars. They were like, oh, we're not gonna do anything. And then they were mining it in the background. So sure, whatever. But uh, that is just what it is. So just be aware of, uh, just watch what they do, not what they say. Uh, states here, much of the industry's skepticism centers on Bitcoin's unpredictable price swings and a lack of things it can buy more than a decade since its creation. So, so here's the thing. 
when Bitcoin first came out, if you're new, it was a, it was slated as a cryptocurrency. This is why I always say cryptocurrency and digital assets, because a lot of the things that we're going to do for it are not going to be currency. It's going to be a digital asset. So like with Theta, that is great if you want to uh, purchase or to invest into bandwidth because we're going to need so much of it. Uh, if you're into VeChain, well, there's going to be a lot of things that need to be tracked on the blockchain as far as like um, medications and food items and different uh, uh, forgeries and even voting. Who knows? And then for like with Ethereum, we're going to need these things called smart contracts, especially for like decentralized finance. These are not cryptocurrencies. I mean, they are in general, but they're digital assets. So when they talk about here about things that you can buy with it, well, first of all, PayPal is solving that problem. They're allowing Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, uh, Litecoin, Ethereum to be part of that. They're going to settle things in dollars, but they're still going to allow you to do for cryptocurrency. But then if you want to talk about the, the store of value narrative that Bitcoin has, you can't buy much with a, with a uh, Casso or a Jackson Pollock painting, but it's a great store of value if you want to put your money into it. You can't really buy too much with land, but it's a great store of value if you want to put your money into it. it you, you can't too... You, you can't buy too much with a, with a 76, whatever, take, take whatever kind of classic car that you have, like, like the old James Bond car. Uh, you can't really do too much. You can't sell, but it's a great store of value. And that's the same thing uh, with Bitcoin. That's why the narrative is what it is. It's a great store of value and it's digital gold. I'm not going to go anywhere with a gold token and go, give me a grande latte. It just doesn't work like that, but it's a great store of value. And it's a great hedge against the market. So CounterPoint Global, led by Dennis Lynch has expanded with a simple sounding mantra of being on unique companies whose market value can increase significantly. And that's what these companies are all looking for, asymmetrical returns. So if they put $1,000 into Bitcoin, they could lose it all. Let me sure, I guess. It could go to zero. You know, we keep saying that stupid phrase, but in all honesty, it's not going to zero. So I'm just going to stop saying it. Uh, but for the asymmetrical uh, return, they know there's a huge upside, right? Where else can you go from almost 50,000 to 150,000, which is what my personal prediction is. Where can you 3X your money uh, in a very short amount of time? Try doing that with a bond. Try doing that in a savings account. Try even doing that with the stock market unless you're getting super risky. It's very tough. So that's why these guys are here. Make no bones about it. The group oversees about 19 funds, uh, of which five delivered gains in excess of 100% in 2020. Ooh, 100% good for you. We do that on a Tuesday. So. Anyhow, this is just great news and it moves a needle. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to the next piece about another older industry getting into crypto. So this one, BNY Mellon support for Bitcoin is a tipping point for crypto, says industry leaders. And we've actually covered this last week, but I want to re-examine what's going on as far as like what people have said, especially our, our uh, friend of the show, Alex Maschioli. So this week's this week, America's oldest bank, BNY Mellon announced plans to store and manage Bitcoin on behalf of its clients. That's great. So remember what I, what I talked about is that not everybody's like you and me. They don't wanna get a ledger and they wanna learn all these different things. And they got like 10 kids running around, they got two jobs trying to have a social life. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. So, I mean, I like this crypto, I'll get into it, but I need someone to like, you know, store it for me. Cause I hear about this guy who's got this, uh, this mining rig or, or this computer and he's tried eight different passwords. He's got two more, he's gonna lose all his Bitcoin. Or I heard about this, this hack over at Ledger and I don't wanna lose. And, it was a personal attack or it's, it's a personal info, uh, uh, mess up, but uh, you know what I mean. And they just hear about people losing their crypto on these different devices. Like, I don't want to deal with that. But if a bank does, especially with Mellon, it's been around 200 plus years and it's FDIC insured, I'll do that. So we can't look down on people because they don't want to come to where we are. As long as they're here in the, under the party in the big tent, I'm happy that they're here. I don't care. So a key milestone, BNY Mellon, 236-year-old American investment bank, that controls around $2 trillion announced on February 11th that it will store Bitcoin and other digital currencies offering the same asset management service that it offers for traditional currencies and stocks. Again, that's great because not everybody wants to store it. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to have to lose it. They don't want the anxiety. So uh, I understand. Uh, states here, once their crypto offering is available later this year, it could soon prove to be an inflection point as it will fundamentally change how asset managers view Bitcoin and other digital assets. Alex Maschioli, head of institutional services at digital asset prime broker Bequan. I never thought about that, about how it could really shift things. I mean, I know it was a good thing, you know, but it's, it's good to hear about a different perspective. He also states, just think about what would happen to crypto assets if even a small portion of BNY Mellon's institutional customers decide to allocate to Bitcoin. And 
this is the reason, this is why I like to subscribe and listen to Alex because he's the guy that can tell you this information. Nobody else can do that. Nobody else is on YouTube who is dealing with billion dollar hedge funds. Only this guy. So that's why I like to listen to him. He says even only one half of 1% of the 41 trillion BNY melon overseas is committed to crypto, even if only one half. We may see prices approach the targets that have been mentioned by JP Morgan, Guggenheim and others. And if you remember, be, that's like 600,000 uh, in who knows how long, maybe two, three years, or maybe 146 by the end of the year, which is my personal prediction is. Anyhow, uh, it was just another way that we're talking about moving the needle, these older institutions getting in, newer institutions getting in, everybody's getting in, and this is good for us. And also, if you want to take a look at Alex's uh, channel, uh, he is responsible for this little gem, my top five altcoin picks. Uh, it was just actually a, a, a funny one. It was just a joke. But uh, he's got a lot of great uh, guests. They do a lot of different uh, TA fundamental analysis and sentiment analysis. And he's always in my uh, description of all my videos, along with like five or six other YouTubers that I recommend that I listen to every day. So check that out. And that is it. Let me know what you think of the comment section. Let's move on to our last pieces. So this one, I, I read the whole article. The elites have set the stage for the greatest economic crisis in history. Okay. So I just want to talk to you real quick uh, about this. And that is that, uh, first of all, it's an interesting article. Uh, there's a lot of different points and pieces to it, but it really comes down to the crux, which is this, is that, uh, you know, everything's stacked against you and uh, there's no way out. And you just are a victim, not a victim, but you are, uh, you are um, hold, held hostage by the circumstances of the powers that be around you. You have to remember uh, something. That is that uh, that is a BS statement and that uh, you have the, uh, the power right now or, or the authority to do a lot of different changes, especially with what's going on in cryptocurrency digital assets. This is one of the few times I can remember where you have a, a major advantage to really take, uh, to just take control of finances. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not telling you what to do. But uh, there are some huge asymmetrical returns here if you pick the right project. I don't just listen to me. There's a lot of different YouTubers out there that have their, uh, their opinions. You can do your own research. You can take a look at the projects. You can look at the white paper, read who is financing, read the uh, teams behind it and their track record, and go from there. So yeah, when, you, when you see these types of things and like, oh, there's a big economic reset and they're going to do all this, true. I mean, it could be true, but you're not helpless. You can do a lot of different things to help out your own financial situation. And it's also, so we take a look at that. And then like articles like this, uh, why did Bitcoin and ETH price correct sharply overnight? Who cares? Uh, honestly, I, I don't, there is this thing about, about uh, trading and I, I do some trading here and there, just like, you know, 5% of my portfolio. But in all actuality, a lot, a lot of what I do is just buy and hold. And, uh, People make it so difficult, but it's not. Like, you know, really, if it's if you just want to make things simple for yourself, just buy and hold, and then just let time do the rest, and that's all. I I think people make it more difficult than what it has to be uh, because it uh, allows people to to depend on them for whatever reason. I don't understand why, but uh, really, that's really going to come to So this is a great article, I'm sure. Uh, I may not read pieces of it. It's going to sleep, but. Um, it really comes down to this. If you're a long-term investor, now's the time to buy Bitcoin. That's really all. And that's really all I can really say. Um, there may be reasons of why it went down and people may have lost a bunch of money because they're traders and that's, uh, that's a big thing. That's fine. I'm just not one of those people. I just, like today, I, was, I woke up, I'm like, oh my God, yeah, finally. And uh, I can actually, you know, put more of my dollar cost averaging and just wait around. And that's really it. <laughs> that's, that is that's the big thing. So, uh, whatever you're, you're into, let me know in the comments section. But uh, again, it, it really just comes down to um, you have a pretty good opportunity here. Uh, just do your own research and uh, you know, follow your gut. All right. And then last up, three reasons why Theta price hit a new all-time high. This is just big for me because it's, I'm a big believer in Theta. It's one of my top you know, two, three picks for this, for this, uh, this cycle. I think it's going to be big. So there's three reasons. And just so you know, Theta price increased by more than 350% rolling from 66 cents on December 10th to three bucks, almost 350 on February 13th. It's pretty good. So why? Well, there's three reasons. Non-fungible tokens, uh, there's a theta swap DEX, and then there's some big name partnerships. So just so you know, they're getting into NFTs. There's a thing called a theta token mentor that allows users to create TNT 20 tokens, and they don't need to have any experience with smart contracts. So that's pretty cool. You can check that out. You can go to their website. I'll link in the description below. 
that simplifies the process of minting new assets on the Theta blockchain. They also got a Theta a decentralized exchange. Um, they're going to do Theta Swap allows users to swap Theta based TNT20 tokens and Theta Fuel, just like Sushi Swap. And then the last thing is big name partnerships. On February 9th, uh, the team announced that Entertainment Powerhouse Lionsgate, home to movies like John Wick and Hunger Games, would be joining the Theta, the Theta uh, ecosystem. So, just lastly, I'll just say this. Um, when you're looking at projects, just look at, you know, uh, first of all, read the white paper. Does it actually have a use case? Check. Uh, who is behind it? Who, who are the people that are actually running the show? Are they a good team? Check. Have they done things before? Check. And then, uh, you know, do they have um, good uh, investments? Uh, are people who are investing in them, are they, you know, deep pockets? Check, check, check. So with Theta, you know, we did a, a video just called Do Your Own Research, and we, we went into detail about those, and those check all the, all the marks. So for this one, I don't know where Theta is going to go, but I know it's pretty big, especially with these things that are going on. Again, they're not competing with Google or uh, YouTube. They're actually working in partnership with them because as we're doing these things, as you're watching these videos, as you're doing watching esports, as you're doing a, a, a Zoom meetings, that all takes a ton of bandwidth. And that's what Theta is. Uh, they, they can actually sell or they actually take your unused bandwidth by using a, uh, a guardianship node. And they can uh, uh, they can keep that and process it for other places where it's actually needed, and uh, you can pay for that in Theta or T Fuel. So I think it's a pretty good program. I think it's going to be big. Anyhow, so that is it for today's video. Well, if you made it this far, hey, congratulations, you made it. Uh, if you liked it, uh, once you give it a thumbs up, that really help out. Also consider subscribing because a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that is it for today. If you like these types of videos, I'm going to put up uh, two and left and right. Let YouTube do its magic, and that is all. So. Uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.